Okay, we will start. So I will present you the uh, project, please. <laughs> I will present you a project uh, called Ibiogen West. This project is funded by two regions, uh, region Brittany and Pays de la Loire. And I am Olivier Collin, and I work here as, uh, at INRI Aren as the manager of the bioinformatics core facility. So in this talk, uh, I will explain, give you a few hints about the, the context, how this bottom-up project emerged from the life science community in Brittany and Pays la Loire, and what we have done to, to set up a virtual research environment and its implication for the open science. So biology is now a digital science. Um, a long time ago, when you wanted to, to do some biology, you, you could put a few scientists on a boat and send them across the world just to, to gather information. Now the time, times have changed and uh, most of the biology research is done in, in research labs. And uh, if you combine these two ideas, putting people on the sea, gathering information or gathering samples and sequencing these samples, it creates on the Terra Ocean project. And this project is very emblematic of the situation because um, many laboratories, many core facilities in bioinformatics are now struggling to analyze all the data generated by the Tara Ocean project. And why so much data? Um, because biology has changed dramatically, and if you consider, for example, the, the, the data generation of the BGI, so the Beijing Genome Institute, it's one of the major um, sequencing facilities in the world. They can generate 20 petabytes per year. It's almost the same range as the Large Hadron Collider. So in the last years, biology has dramatically changed. And uh, if you analyze this chart, you, s you see that uh, in 2008, the, the cost of the sequencing is, uh, has uh, changed, <laughs> has lowered, it's, it's much more cheaper. <laughs> it's a real opportunity for biologists because now they can deal not only um, with genes, but they can also deal with genomes. And this slope um, in 2008 was created by the, the emerging new technology of sequencing, what is called next generation sequencing. So a new sequencing machine have appeared and uh, they can give us the opportunity to go faster. If you compare the, the Human Genome Project, uh, the first sequence of a uh, human genome was, was um, developed by a consortium of several countries. And uh, this consortium worked for almost 10 years and uh, it cost millions of dollars. Now you can achieve the same thing with uh, one person in one week and uh, for a few thousand dollars. So there's a complete disruptive change. And this has very profound impacts on biology. Since uh, this discipline now uh, is, can be the source of a uh, huge amount of data. So if you see this, uh, this figure here, well, boop, boop, boop. Ah, you see. Um, so this is the production of data by sequencing machines, and this is the normal growth of the computing uh, performances of the computers and the storage uh, capacity. So this, the, the traditional Moore law 
is now completely outpaced by the, the growth and the, the capacity of the sequencing uh, facilities around the world. And this is what, it, what has been called the, the data deluge, or the data apocalypse, or the data nami. And um, genomics is only the first part. Uh, ne next, there will be proteomics, bioimaging. All these disciplines are now uh, starting to generate huge amounts of data. And this is very interesting, because not so often you can see a discipline that, ha that is changing. Um, and now biology has become a digital science, but uh, there's a need um, when you switch to a digital science, there's a need of technical competences uh, that, not, that are not often uh, present in biology research labs. And there's also this people paradox. Um, they are automating more and more the data production, and it creates a need for more human resources. But the pr problem is how a discipline that is uh, structured for data production can switch to a discipline that can cope with the data analysis of the huge amount of data generated. And this is a real human resource management problem because um, the biologist work is not changing. Uh, they, they have to, to acquire new skills and competences. And it is not so, so easy. And the, the good part is that the biology will need uh, some strong interaction with computer science and computer scientists. So the multidisciplinary uh, aspect of science uh, is now a, a reality. And uh, here is our, our project called eBiogen West. Biogen West is a, a network of core facilities covering all the two regions. It's a, a project that is uh, now almost three years old. It, and uh, as I said, it's funded by Brittany and Pays de la Loire. And um, we want to, to prepare a, a roadmap for the switch to, to e-science. We are also building communities. We are giving trainings and workshops. And most importantly, we have uh, developed a virtual research environment for our community, for the life science community in the west of France. If you consider the definition of a virtual research environment, uh, it can basically be considered as a collaboration tool for scientists. And uh, the main properties are the fact that is it web-based, it obviously supports communities of practice, and the resources behind this virtual environment are also adapted to the community needs of course, and uh, it should be open and flexible. And al also it should, as a collaboration tool, it should support the, the sharing of resources. And uh, a life cycle environment is tightly linked with the research life cycle. Uh, if you consider this, so you have your clever ideas, then you search uh, people to to share your clever ideas, and then you search for money, and once you have the money, you then start the, the, the real research project with the experiments, uh, it could be the wet lab part for uh, la biological labs, and then you have the dissemination fi phase uh, that, that could lead to other ideas. And um, a, a virtual research environment is a tool that must accompany uh, all these different steps at different level, of course. And uh, if you, when you, we consider this problem, we choose to integrate different tools. So we choose at first a data analysis portal called the Galaxy. This this one has not to be confused with Galaxy Zoo. It's a complete different. It's a, a web portal for the very common in uh, bioinformatics community. We have also choose to, to focus on the met metadata management and uh, also we used a collaborative portal and we had to, to put some additional tools and some glue to 
build the interaction be between these different tools. Um, the main, the key point was for us to to minimize the development processes and to to build our environment on the more um, on robust and well-known um, software bricks. For example, so Galaxy, it's a web portal for the data analysis in uh, biomedical and life science. It's a very popular now because uh, the interface is very intuitive and also it allows the end user to, to build and to create workflows and uh, all these workflows can be shared between the different users of the portal. And here at uh, our own uh, Galaxy instance at uh, GenWest, we, we have uh, interfaced more than 800 and 800 tools in diff covering different fields uh, in life science. Something that was very important for us is was the focus on the met metadata uh, management. And we choose the ISA tools suite that was developed uh, at Oxford Research Center. And uh, this tool um, gives a complete environment for the biologist, allow, allowing him to describe his experiments, and more importantly, to describe its experiments with the standards ontologies. So in this case, it allows us to, it's not completely a constraint, but it's, it gives a, a framework that would guide people and to, to avoid the, the scattering of the, the information. Using ISA tools, you are able to create local repositories. And uh, these local, local repositories can be also uh, published uh, to, to, other, um, to, to other people. Um, in this case, we had also we have added some uh, extra tools to what the, I called formerly the, the glue to to build the interaction with the other tools chosen. And uh, there's also the, the Hub Zero portal. Uh, it's a scientific web portal that was uh, focusing uh, at first on nanotechnologies, and uh, this portal offers many collaborative tools like wiki blogs and um, it's it is uh, its philosophy is is around the, the management of resources and resources can be almost everything it can be results uh, data sets articles uh, presentations uh, almost everything uh, it also includes some lightweight project management um, if you consider the the life cycle uh, the results process life cycle, it, it offers a minimal statement, a minimal um, environment for to manage the interac interaction between scientists. And using these three tools, Hub Zero, Galaxy, and M, uh, we were able to, to build um, what we call a continuum for the management and the analysis of biological data. Um, it's very important to, to to stick to this continuum um, concept because uh, what we wanted to do was to avoid the the painful communication com uh, the painful um, switching between environments um, especially for biologists who are not very keen of uh, reformatting and uh, using some clever tools so if everything integrated in one single space then they can be much more comfortable. And of course, it's a collaborative environment. And using this, um, we, we can consider that we can provide a computing infrastructure on which we build a data infrastructure. And this whole inf physical infrastructure is available through a web portal that will give users project management functionalities collaboration, collaborative functionalities, dissemin dissemination functionalities. And on this data infrastructure, there will be obviously the data 
that will be analyzed through workflows and we can add some uh, security provenance versioning and sharing functionalities. So it's a, a complete environment. And what we are trying to do here is to, to make a shift, a complete paradigm shift, because we would like to, to switch from this picture, so biologists have data, and we say to them, go on the computing center or, or on the data, data center, learn, the, learn the, the command line, learn how to use a job scheduler, and at the end, uh, very often, they can be discussed by such a, a philosophy. So what we are trying to do is to, to plug in the, the IT uh, functionalities directly onto the data. And so we would like to, to bring back, <laughs> we would like to, to bring back biology to biologists. And um, so, we, we saw that um, biology is now has no characteristics. It is now a data intensive science, and there's definitely a huge need for m interaction with other disciplines and mostly uh, computer science. And um, also, there will be some sharing and openness issues. Um, but the, this sharing and openness issues are also linked to the, the data. Jose told us uh, previously that the, the, the data was very important. And uh, I recently read into an article um, this sentence uh, that data should become a first class citizen of scientific communication. It means that the, the, re the, the reign of the article and the impact factor uh, should, should be mitigated and uh, there should be some uh, extra work and extra efforts put on the data uh, management and data uh, generation. For example, a scientist uh, that takes time th that takes time to to cure some data, to put some data, to to clean them up, and to put that them uh, as open resources, uh, it's not very useful for his career. So it means that th there's definitely a, a problem because how can be what could be the incentives to to bring the, the researcher to to uh, some voluntary uh, sharing of their data? And um, so I, I mentioned also or here the the DOIs, the digital object object identifiers, and um, for the moment in the the biological uh, field there's. That only DOIs are only used for articles, but very not so much for data sets. And this has to change because many other disciplines are commonly using these uh, tools to, to make the, the data discoverable. And um, so, using these three tools HubZero, ISA Tools, and Galaxy, um, we think that we have built the, the a framework that could support open science for, for a life science community, but not only because uh, as an environment, uh, uh, a virtual research environment is quite agnostic. So you don't have to, it's not only focused on life science, but it, it could be uh, used for many other uh, disciplines, I guess. And um, how can it be used as a support for open science. At first, for HubZero, everything is a resource, and as such, it's a shareable resource. Um, HubZero also supports DOI. Look, it means that if you want to share a resource using HubZero, you will be able to tag it with a digital object identifier and to make it available for the community. Uh, our ISA Tools uh, project, um, enfin, our ISA Tools, not, not project, but uh, instance, um, focusing on the metadata will support the provenance. Because when you are in a, an open world of data, 
uh, it becomes very tri critical to know what data you are you will be incorporating in your own research. Then the, the provenance uh, with many uh, parameters, so the, the description of how the data that you will use is generated becomes very important. Uh, can you trust the data that you are using? Uh, we using the, the work of uh, the Galaxy portal allows us to, to build uh, shareable workflows. Uh, for example, um, and they can be very complex, and it's a very interesting tool to to help people to 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 progress and to to build some communities around some disciplines. And uh, well, we just recently added um, what we call citizen. Uh, it's a, a portal or, or framework for citizen science where a scientist can describe his project and describe his, the requirements for his project. And he can also build a community of users that will be the data collectors. And just using a simple form, uh, the users will be able to, to send a, a picture of, or some, some data. And uh, if it's uh, on the, the mobile application, then all the, the GPS information, the, lo the location, will be added automatically to, to the data. And uh, for some domains like uh, biology and uh, ornithology, botany, architecture, it can be interesting to, to have a, a fleet of uh, citizens that will uh, gather th some data. And it's uh, some... Uh, uh, the actual look of the... The, of a prototype project. So someone took a, a, a picture, this picture is tagged and you, you can see uh, different information about the, the, um, what has been tagged, what has been seen. And uh, uh, there's also some functionalities for data curation and also an API access to, to speed up all the process. And as a conclusion, I, I could say that uh, so biology becomes a digital science. And um, as a, a bioinformatics facility manager, I, it gives me two reactions. Uh, when I'm very optimistic, I could say that uh, it's a great time. Uh, when I'm rather pessimistic, I can run in the hallway with my hands at the sky and, and crying, and we are doomed because we, are, we will die with uh, all this data. But uh, it's very... Um, fascinating to see a discipline changing so rapidly and uh, so desperately in need of input of all the other disciplines. They, are, they have many things to learn from the other disciplines that, are very, that have already generated huge amounts of data that can uh, speed up the different programs and software that can be used to, to analyze this data. So it's a, a trim, very good opportunity to, to bring communities together. So we have built what we call a system of systems so using so metadata management, collaborative tools, and analysis portal, just to bring back biology to the biologist. And um, it's very linked to the research, research life cycle, and as such, uh, we noticed that the act acceptance and the adoption issues were key issues because um, we, we don't want to be intrusive, but sometimes the, uh, there are workflows that are very well established in the wet labs and uh, we, we cannot just come and say, take a look at our tool, it's wonderful. Uh, it needs to, to be integrated progressively in the workflow of the, of the labs. And here I am, I'm done. Question? Ah, two questions. Uh, sorry, it's it's a mixture between a question and a comment. <clears throat> By reading your sentence there, bringing back biology to the biologists, I I, I think. 
that it's the opposite. I mean, biology is biology. It's the biologists that evolved from being scientists to being data providers, and now mm. by becoming data analysts, they come back to biology. Mm. Am I correct or not? Oh, I guess we, we can see this thing from different perspective. Um, what we we saw when we we are teaching bioinformatics, uh, there are some layers of. Uh, we are just uh, grasping people, taking them from their uh, biological environment, and then uh, trying to to adapt them to the bioinformatics environment. And then below, just below, there's uh, of course the computing environment. And sometimes the the different steps that the biologist has to or to to do to become a bioanalyst or a bioinformatician. But with some com so with some skills in uh, paralleli paral parallelization or some um, uh, scripting, uh, all these things are taking him away from his main focus, his research project. He can be sometimes they can be loose, completely loose, and this, that's why that's that's how I and I wrote this uh, this set this this sentence. But your point of view is also can be also correct, I guess. Thank you for your talk. Uh, just a small question. I think one of the, the, the big challenge here uh, for the, the technical platform, social platform you want to bring, is you have to bring two kind of people, two kind of community in, in, this, uh, in these tools, so the researcher and the citizens. So how you can Imagine to manage these two categories of people that have some uh, different uh, attempts for this. And uh, for, for, for citizens, for example, uh, how do you plan to make some sp special uh, uh, feedback uh, systems for, uh, in order to, to be sure that they are thinking that are participating to some things? Because uh, the, the, the two categories of people may have completely different uh, objectives, even even they are, they are sharing uh, mm. the same idea. It's a, it's a tricky question because um, um, what, what we saw, what the um, we were focused mostly on the RT part of the of the development part and the technical part of the the project, and uh, then when the project grows, the the social part and the, um, the 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 needs of the community starts to to be more. Um, more relevant, re more re relevant, and um, as such, um, I could say that we can inspire from take some inspiration from the uh, major project like Galaxy Zoo, or to see how they they succeeded in building a community around this project. For the moment, we are just learning by doing, uh, in my opinion. Okay. Ah, yeah, Patrick. <laughs> Uh, you, you speak about uh, DOI, uh, and uh, I was told that it was uh, managed by private uh, companies, private publishers, DOI. So it is uh, Open Science Day. Uh, do you know, do you confirm that? Because it could be dangerous to have a unique identifier that is managed by publishers like uh, Elsevier, Atrapoli, et etc. Et uh, DOIs are managed by the Data Side Consortium. So I they are probably uh, private entities, but there are also public entities that are behind this, uh, this consortium. But uh, it's not, um, the, the, con the key concept is to use DOIs. They are, uh, they are not only this one. Uh, there are different kinds of DOIs that can be used also. Um, we choose to focus on this one because there's a uh, INIST in, in France, it's a uh, national agency uh, for, uh, that will um, that offers uh, an, an easy process to open to obtain DOIs. It's much more a uh, conveniency uh, issue. Let's go for the, the last talk. Thank you very much.